guys, my name is Courtney and this is Classics with Courtney. I feel like in past videos I've been slightly misleading that I don't like romance in my book. This is certainly not the case in any sense. So with Valentine's Day around the corner, I'm going to talk about the romance that I like to see in books and some of my romance recommendation reads. I love classics that question love and question humanity with love. I find them really fascinating. Love is one of the things that makes us really human, so it's a really important and interesting aspect to talk about in novels. So first of all, I don't like the plot to be simply driven by the romance, especially when you have a fantasy book, it's really annoying when the romance seems to take over all aspects of the plot. I like a subtle, very slow burning kind of romance. If you know my reading taste, I do not read a lot of contemporary romance. If I want something cute and fluffy, the only thing that gets my heart pounding is shoujo manga. Shoujo manga is basically the comic book form of um, YA romance. I don't know why. I like my shoujo romance, but when I'm reading a contemporary novel, it just drives me crazy. That being said, it can be done well. I'm not saying that it can't. I seem to have three major issues when it comes to romance in books. The first one is the obvious love triangle. It can be done well again but it's just unrealistic and it's also really annoying. And a lot of times I really just hate one of the characters and I'm just like, why are you even an option? Second is insta-love. That is another obvious thing that most people hate in romance books. Again, I like the slow burning romance. I don't want Bing love at first sight. I would love to see a book that does love at first sight really well. I think that'd be really, really fascinating. And my third big issue is when the plot is dominated or driven by the romance instead of the action. If you're reading this big fantasy series and all this intense stuff is going on and there should be battles and wars going on, I don't want to hear the little whiny bitchy stuff about love. I love drama, romance, inquiries. I mean, I watched Down Abbey, for goodness sakes. It needs to be done in a tasteful way or it just gets really, really high school and really obnoxious. For whatever reason, drama plus romance just drives me nuts. I think that's my major issues with romance in books, especially YA novels. If you're reading a YA, they think, oh, you're a teenager or older now, you want the romance. And that is the case. I do want romance, but I want it done well, I want it done tastefully, and I want slow burning tension. Now I'm going to talk about some of my favorite romances in books. One of my favorite fantasy series is of course Harry Potter. And if you've read Harry Potter, you don't get a slower burning romance than that. The romance is subtle, it's not really a part of the story, it's just kind of slid in there really subtle and I really really like that. I know I'm not a really big fan of Cassandra Clare and I'm not really a big fan of the Mortal Instruments series. A lot of things drive me nuts in that series but man do I love the Infernal Devices. Will and Tessa's romance is just really really fascinating and I love it so much. I do get the love triangle in there and like I said there are certain characters I do not like. I have a really conflicted relationship with the Infernal Devices. Spoiler alert! Spoiler spoiler! Spoiler look away! I don't like the weird epilogue thing where Tessa and Jem get together or get to have a second chance. No, I'm sorry Tessa, you get one person. You get one love of your life. You don't get two. No, you're done. But I just pretend that certain things didn't happen and I got my pretty little romance that is just full of lots of tension. Drama done well and tastefully in this book, I think. Compared to the other Cassandra Clare books, I think the drama is actually done pretty tastefully and I really, really enjoyed this book series. The romance was pretty spot on. With the Clockwork Angel series, if you're looking for another really fun, action-driven story where the romance is not super important but is it sexy as hell, yeah, I definitely recommend the Gallica Girls spy series. I think the first one is like, I tell you I love you but then I'd have to kill you. You know that series. The first two books are just a lot of fun. They feel a little bit young, but I still really enjoyed them, but as they progress they get darker and darker, and the romance is so, so good. <laughs> I think that was the first book where I shipped myself with a character, like, ugh, fictional boyfriend, yeah. A really subtle romance is Howl's Moving Castle. This kind of pops in there at the end, it's just kind of a thing that happens. But again, I just really love our characters. They're very strong, independent people. That's what makes their romance really strong. If you have weak characters, the romance can just kind of fall to pieces. Sophie, she's perfect. Well, he's not perfect. My contemporaries, one of my favorite contemporaries, as you may know, is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I absolutely adored Fangirl. And not just for the romance aspect, I thought the coming of age story was just really beautifully done and I really enjoyed the story from that aspect. Another great soon-to-be classic would be Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Oh my goodness, when I was trying to think of classics in literary fiction, I don't know why I thought of this one, but I did. 
I mean, I did have some issues with it. It got a little boring at parts. People can see it as pretentious, and I understand that. But when I was reading it, I really, really enjoyed it. And at one point, I was rooting so hard for those romances. Like, just so strong. I just love the feeling of hope it leaves you with. It's a really beautiful story. If we're gonna recommend newer classic romances, I'm of course going to pick Princess Bride. Nothing says cheesy romance like Princess Bride. Both the movie and the book are so fantastic, so sarcastic and funny and ironic. It's just playing up all those horrible, horrible tropes. But you just feel this nostalgia when you watch it and when you read it. I feel like there's something that connects me to this book. Like, I've heard this story before. It's nothing new, but then again, it's just so perfect. Another soon-to-be classic is Trumpet by Jackie Kay. It talks about love. It does. But it's not a romance in any sense. But is it a beautiful story about love? Yes, yes it is. And of course, if we're recommending romance books, there's just one book I'm going to mention every single time, and that is Jane Eyre. Oh my gosh. Beauty and the Beast and Beauty and the Beast retellings are definitely like my favorite fairy tale, which really makes me question because I'm like, do I like ugly old men? I don't know. I don't know. There seems to be some parallels about romance books that I really like where it features a really ugly old guy and I'm really scared for myself because of that. Jane Eyre, it is not just a romance. Oh my gosh, Jane Eyre is such a strong character, goes through such great character development. It's really a coming of age story versus a romance. But man, that romance, oh my god. There's just this one scene I would just read over and over again because the tension was so high and I'm just like, oh my god. Wait, yes, it is a romance has some other great classic elements in there, it talks about a lot of different stuff. One of my favorite reads of all time, and yes, I did like the romance in it a lot. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't just read it for the romance my first time, but I might have read it for my second time and my third time just for the romance. Maybe. So now that we got some of the romance reads for Valentine's Day out of the way, let's talk about the single awareness books. I definitely feel the single awareness day on Valentine's Day very strongly. So in general, I have grown out of Valentine's Day. I don't like it so much anymore. I don't know why we can't go back to the days in elementary school when everybody was obligated to give everybody else candy. When did it stop being a holiday about candy? I just want free candy. It was like the second coming of Halloween. What happened? Anyway, as you get older, you start to feel your single awareness kick in because all those people are so annoying around you. If you're like me and you don't necessarily want a romance read, on Valentine's Day, I got some suggestions for you as well. Catcher in the Rye! Definitely not a romance book. If you connect to Holden, you will feel pain in your heart every second of this book, but it's definitely one of my favorites. You should read it for Valentine's Day. Really feeling the love, you should pick up Game of Thrones. Definitely a lot of sex, not a lot of love. Definitely a lot of fighting and killing, not a lot of love. <laughs> Another one if you want your heart to break. His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. That book. Oh. Not the first one. Golden Compass was fine. His, um, The Subtle Knife and The Amber Spyglass. Oh gosh. I, I don't know if I cried or not for that book series, but man, oh, it just got me in the heart with the romance. Damn. I'm still kind of upset about it, but it was really well done. Ugh. Okay guys, that was the end of my video. If you have any Valentine's Day reads or anti-Valentine's Day reads, put them in the comments down below. I'd especially love to hear your anti-Valentine's Day reads. I'll see you guys later and keep it classy.